Hello, and welcome to Claire's World. I am Claire, and today I would like to share with you more messages from the 25th dimension and from my highest self that resides there with the rest of all our highest selves. Before we move forward though, I would like to ask you to please like this video and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And do please leave me a comment because I read all of them, respond to all of them, and I really enjoy the comments, the, the people that let me know if this resonates with you or not. I'm really curious to hear where everybody's at with this kind of stuff, especially going through what we're going through right now. So without further ado, let's move forward. I'm going to be reading from a transcript of my latest um, BQH, uh, which is a sort of QHHT session, quantum healing hypnosis session. And uh, my hypnotist name is Lorraine. So when I say Lorraine, she's the one asking me questions I'm prepared in advance. And when I refer to me, I'm talking about myself under hypnosis, which means the answers are coming from the 25th dimension. All right, let's get started. Lorraine, why do we set ourselves up to eat food on this planet when we could theoretically survive on breath and sun energy? Was this an idea introduced by the dark to create predatory cycles and a sense of separation amongst the species? Me. What was done, it was not an idea introduced by the dark. It was an idea we all agreed to, we all chose to introduce. What was done is we wanted to. Everything that you ingest, everything, including air, is a code. It's like a program in the matrix. It's like coding almost. And what it does, it activates a sort of vibration. This vibration, whether it's high vibration or low vibration, is needed. We needed to have this low vibration, this eating matter, because matter is low vibration. For the simple reason that you have to slow down vibration, you have to slow down frequency to create matter. So we introduce this matter, what we consider matter, solid things into our body to recode ourselves all the time, to maintain this matrix going, to maintain this appearance of solidity for this planet going. Now, we were never meant to get to the point of eating each other. This was never meant to be that way. This was introduced by the dark. The animals could have gone, could have gone without. But once this idea was introduced, it was picked up by everybody. And yes, it does help with the idea of fear, predatory cycle, but really the point, the idea behind it, the reason we all caught up to it, and the reason we all accepted this is because it does help to maintain, to preserve, the low vibrational coding that is needed to maintain this reality the way it is. So it does serve a purpose. Lorraine, thank you. You said that we won't need to eat on new earth. What about the other two groups? Will they continue to eat animals or what will they eat? Me, they will continue to eat, but they will no longer eat animals for a simple reason. The people going to consciously hang out with the aliens they will not need to preserve the low vibrational frequency any longer, and they don't eat animals on other, on higher dimensional planets. The people going to 3D, they are in a simulation chamber. They don't need to eat animals to maintain it. The chamber is maintained by the planets that are allowing this to be maintained. And therefore, there will be no more need to introduce this particular piece of code into our bodies. They're not going to do this anymore. We're not going to be eating animals anymore because you understand the idea is that we are eating each other. These animals are teammates. Lorraine, there is a psychic and I will not mention the name. Uh, I was asking about the psychic because she's referring to this eating meat uh, issue. So the name is irrelevant. I just want to share with you what the response was from 25th. So there is a psychic, let's call her, you know, Mary, <laughs> who says that it will no longer be okay to eat meat in the future. Is this true? Me. Yes, she is correct. It's not that it will not be allowed. It will not be like a rule. It just won't be available. It will just be something that people don't even think of doing. There will be no need for that. Lorraine. 
She says that we will lose our own life should we take someone else's life, but she says that it will still be okay to eat fish because we're exiting the age of Pisces and fishes are Pisces. The 25th was laughing here while Lorraine was saying this. <laughs> Aren't essences from the 25th entering the bodies of fish as well? Me. Yes, they are. And no, she's not correct. It will not, we will just not eat animals anymore. And what I mean by we, we already know a new earth will not need to feed. But even people in 3D, the 3D simulation chambers, they will not eat meat anymore. No type of meat. What it is, is that they will, again, the coding is not needed. We won't need to keep the vibration where it is. People will not know. They will not even remember. It will be irrelevant. They will not even remember this is something we did, that we ate meat. It will not even be a concept. So will they lose their lives if they, if they kill anybody? They will not kill. It will not be part of the program anymore. They will not be... Even in the 3D, in the NS 3D reality, this will not be something that even resonates anymore. It won't not happen because there is a law against it where you will be killed if you kill somebody. This is a very 3D way of thinking about things. It just won't happen. Lorraine, thank you. In the existence of this planet, did animals agree to be eaten by us or other animals? Me. We all agreed that this was a worthwhile idea to try to maintain this reality, the dimension that's, that it's at. However, the animals never agreed to be tortured. This was something that was introduced by the dark. We have already explained this before. And they're referring to something they've said in, in the past. Um, and I put out a video about this uh, only a few videos ago. Uh, you will, if you watch my old videos, you will see, and again, recent videos, you will see that they refer to this entire issue of the commercial animal feeding operations and just the idea of, uh, of torturing animals in general. Lorraine, do essences who incarnate in animal form always incarnate in animals? Or can they, or do they, choose to incarnate into human bodies at times? Me. Yes, they can they can incarnate in human bodies. Anybody can do whatever they want. Any essence can do whatever they want. The essences that we see incarnated in the animals, they're our friends, they're just like us. However, this is very rarely done. Just like people kind of get, commit to a team. Same way our teams of friends that I've chosen to incarnate as animals, they kind of commit to that. They have their friends. And so that's how they keep coming back. However, it has been done. There have been some that have incarnated in other shapes. Just like you might go to your next incarnation and decide to be a cloud somewhere for a few hundred years. You can do whatever you want at any time. And the animals, the essences that embody into the animals, they do the same thing. Lorraine. So animals often will incarnate in the same form because it's familiar, it's comfortable. It's kind of like their team. Me, that is correct, it is their team. And so, I know you're about to ask me this question. There is no hierarchy to animals. It's just an experience. They choose to have a different experience. Lorraine, um, does uh, the animal world have NPCs? NPCs are non-player characters. Basically, they are bodies that don't have essence inside of them. Me, yes, Lorraine. When the essence leaves an animal, does the body always die? Or do the essences at times leave the body behind like we humans do? Me. So the essences that live in the bodies of animals, they do come and go all the time, just like we do. In fact, in some ways, they're probably gone even more than we are, if that's even a competition. However, they generally, when they are ready to move on, they generally do take their body with them. So they will cause something for the body to go as well. And we also as humans rarely leave our bodies behind and are gone for a long time. However, this does happen. For example, the 25th has explained that this happens many times, for example, when there is a case of dementia, when we notice a case of dementia in somebody, uh, the, the, the reason that happens is because the body is left in a loop after the essence has been absent for a long time. The body doesn't know how to deal with it. 
again, rarely does the essence leave the body behind. And normally when the essence is ready to move on, uh, it causes the body to have an accident or a disease or some reason that we assume, uh, you know, that we consider death, a death issue where the body is then gone. But really it's just that the essence decided to move on. But sometimes they do leave the body behind and then, you know, you, you, we might notice or not notice if a person has no essence. Lorraine, thank you. Do animals have amnesia on this planet like we do, or are they consciously aware of being multidimensional beings from the 25th? Me. Yes, they are. They do not have amnesia. So imagine when we're dealing with these animals, we think they're less than us, and they know they're from the 25th, and all of this is a holographic reality. It just blows my mind how completely... Uh, foolish <laughs> we act on this planet <laughs> as humans. Uh, Lorraine, what is the purpose of near-death experiences? Me. It's just an experience. Some people do not want to do hypnosis. They decided they are going to do a near-death experience to be shown God. Lorraine, where do people go who have these experiences? Me. Wherever they need to go to, wherever their higher selves have been trying to show them, they've been ignoring for a long time until they cause an accident so that they can, that, so that they finally cannot get distracted. They're right there, they can't move. And all of a sudden they have a coma, whatever it might be. And all of a sudden their higher self finally has the ability to show them what they need to see without forgetting. Because the higher self will show you the truth every single night in your dreams. But most of us want to forget. And NDE, again, a near death experience, is a brilliant way to get something to your attention that you want to see, but you don't really, are not allowing yourself to see, that you can't really turn away from, can you? Generally speaking, people do remember, remember their NDE experiences and they were laughing. They seem to be a big deal. <laughs> they sure are. <laughs> Lorraine, so this is our essence's way of waking itself up to its truth? Me, that is correct. It's what the essence has wanted to do, except that sometimes the nudges, the dreams, the numbers, the number codes, whatever it is that other people use to get close to source don't work. They get ignored and eventually the higher self will take it up a notch. These people who refuse everything, I'm sorry, these people will refuse everything. They will refuse healers. They pretend not to believe. These are normally either people that are atheists or people that believe in religion. These are people that will not leave the system any other way. And therefore they need to, what we would call crash against a wall for them to actually be open to this other reality. Lorraine, so this is what happened with Clea in her experience with cancer, me. And, and please note, uh, you might not know if this is the first video you watched, but if you watch my other videos, you already know this. I had cancer and cancer was one of the awakening moments in my experience. I was an atheist before I got cancer. I did not become a believer or I don't call myself a believer. I did not connect basically to my spiritual side because of cancer, but cancer was one of the trigger events I set up for myself to remember uh, my truth, basically who I am. And I am sorry, my phone is ringing and I don't want it to be loud in the background. Here we go. Lorraine, so this is what happened with Clay. I know her experience with cancer. Me, that is correct, but she already had it all planned. She never needed, she never needed to crash. The cancer was also achieving other purposes that she needed to, she needed to see. She needed to clear some of the debris in our life, some of the people, some of the low vibrations in our life. And that's what cancer did for her. So it wasn't just the awakening, it was also the clearing all at once of a lot of pent up energy that was not serving her anymore. And absolutely guys, uh, I got rid of so many people while I had cancer. Some people just walked away, which is great. I didn't even have to deal with it. And, and some other people, I just I rediscovered my boundaries and got rid of a lot of negative energy. The fastest way to get rid of negative energy is to get rid of negative people around you. We fight this so much and I have for a long time. And once you do it, you never look back. So if anybody is dealing with a situation like that, uh, you know, I want you to think about this because the fact is 
we can learn our lessons in one minute, in one year, or in 20 years, like in my case. It took me 20 years in a relationship to finally learn that that was not for me. And I had known that, and we know these things from the very beginning, don't we? We all have the signs. So, and I'm not here preaching, I'm speaking from personal experience. <laughs> you know, you, uh, you, you take what resonates with you, you leave the rest, it's all good. But I do uh, want to pass along this message because this is the truth, this is what happens. Lorraine, in this vein, what is the purpose of me creating asthma and the allergies and polyps? Me, all you are doing, you're not keeping up with the amount of travel that you do, the amount of work that you do and all you're doing. Your body's having trouble keeping up with your movements and your work. Your body is doing all it can. These are very small symptoms if you consider everything your body is allowing you to do. Lorraine, so that I understand, you're saying that I'm doing a tremendous amount of work, that the physical form is struggling to keep up with it, and it's just acting out, quote unquote, because it's struggling? Me. That is correct, but it's not struggling in a bad way. It's just lower than you are, much slower than you are. So it's trying to integrate it within itself. It's trying to bring you back and to protect you when you come back into this dimension is what it's trying to do. So perhaps think of it this way. This asthma is allowing you to slow down your breathing. It's allowing to slow down the oxygen coming in. What it's doing is buffering your re-entry into this dimension. So what you consider a negative or an impediment, it's actually a help from your body trying to shield you from what is happening in this dimension. I do just love how they turn our thinking upside down sometimes and make us look at things from a different perspective and it all suddenly makes sense. A lot of things that we consider negative are actually not necessarily negative at all, even when they can be bothersome for us. I understand that's nice, no fun. Lorraine, is there a way for me to convince my body that it doesn't need to quite help me so much and clear this because it is truly hindering my ability to do what I'm choosing to do? Me, you are doing this. Your body is only following your directives. If you choose that it's time for you, you don't need to be protected anymore. You don't need to be shielded your body will go along with it. It will need a little time to calibrate, but it doesn't have to take months, years, or whatever it is. However, remember that you're the one that, the one that has asked for the help because you were also struggling when you were traveling and doing all these things because you were doing so much work. If you are now at peace and you feel confident that you don't need this anymore, it's a switch. You tell your body, your body will follow you. You be kind, oh, I'm sorry, but do be kind to it because it is a little bit slower than you are. In other words, we owe so much to our bodies. All they're doing, even when we think they're acting out, they're following our commands. And many times when we consider a symptom of something, again, something negative, it's really our body trying to protect us. And I think this message luckily is coming up in the collective consciousness, consciousness more and more. I see it in different on different channels where people say that, uh, you know, these symptoms, what we call symptoms of something happening. And many times people say symptoms of ascension. Of course, there is no ascension. It's really because we are doing a lot of work. We're clearing, our bodies are clearing a lot of energy and, uh, and we're, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. And, and we really should be grateful to our bodies for protecting us this way. But then again, if we don't want it anymore, then we just speak with them. Our bodies are sentient and, uh, and they do follow our every intention. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you and bye-bye.